Yes, okay, so this, I am going to open the December 20th, 2017 meeting of the Board of Selectmen for the Town of Lakeville. Our first order of business is to meet with Seth Pickering to receive a certificate for reducing Lakeville's energy consumption by at least 20%. So Seth is here. And um, I'll give a little bit of backstory with this. Uh, Lakeville is a green community. So that is a state program in which we um, are involved with receiving different grants and implementing different uh, grant money for the sake of reducing our carbon footprint. So this is all good stuff. We um, reached this major milestone as a green community, reducing Lakeville's energy consumption by at least 20% after five years or more as a green community. <coughs> so um, that was from FY11 to FY16. So this is obviously a big deal. So Seth has a piece of paper to <coughs> commemorate the, the occasion. So would you like to, yeah. Sure. Is this good? Thank you. Yep. Yep. Okay. So uh, thank you, <coughs> Chairman Burke, Ms. Hollenbeck, and Mr. Farley, uh, for the opportunity to come to Lakeville and present uh, the town with a certificate uh, marking a significant milestone as a green community here in the Commonwealth. Uh, we have about 10 to date that have met their 20% reduction goal uh, over the five-year periods. Um, so Lakeville achieved a 20% reduction in municipal energy usage from its baseline year of fiscal year 2011 for the five-year period beginning in fiscal year 2012 and ending in fiscal year 2016. So congratulations, uh, it's a really great job. <coughs> Um, so this achievement reflects a lot of hard work and extraordinary efforts uh, by the community and the community's exhibited um, you know, uh, a lot of uh, diligence by investing in energy upgrades at municipal uh, facilities uh, and your continued commitment uh, to remaining active in the green communities program um, to meet the 20% energy reduction goal is proof of Lakeville's uh, position as an energy leader here in the Commonwealth as well. Um, so Lakeville um, was one of the first green communities that served primarily by a public power provider, Middleburg Gas and Electric. Um, and this has been um, a really great team effort here in Lakeville, uh, as most good things are. Um, but I'd like to recognize a couple of people in particular uh, for their contributions and support. Uh, first of all, Rita, Rita Garbett. Uh, my experience uh, with green communities is in towns of this size um, with this former government, if the town administrator is not on board and supportive, it doesn't really happen. So uh, that's, a, that's a big part of the deal. Uh, secondly, all of Lakeville selectmen since 2011. Um, they got things started, they've continued things and been very cooperative. It's been a real pleasure to work with the select boards here in, in uh, the town of Lakeville. Uh, Lakeville's Energy Committee been very active. Uh, a couple of people in particular, Larry Simpson, uh, who we were hoping would be here tonight, uh, really helped get things started. Uh, he started bugging me at the office early on uh, and uh, did a nice job to get things going. Uh, Mr. Jim Kenny, uh, his attention to detail and his organizational skills make the Lake Philander report and any type of information that I have to get for Jim uh, some of the highest quality stuff that we get in our program in the entire state. Attention to detail is fantastic. He, fantastic. He's a Naval Academy grad and a submariner, and I know that Admiral Rickover would be proud of him. <laughs> it's a pleasure I for me. My day. <laughs> it's, a, it's a pleasure for me to work with you, John. Same. A um, couple other guys, real quick, um, who were uh, involved for short periods of time: uh, Bob Ifrady and Jim Merritt. Um, um, Bob was the building commissioner here when the stretch code was actually proposed and passed uh, at town meeting, and Jim Merritt was on the planning board at the time and gave to date one of the best intros at a town meeting um, for uh, the article um, <coughs> asking for the town uh, to adopt the stretch code. So those two guys. Um, and then Sandy Richter is here from the Middleburg Gas and Electric. Um, Sandy provides all of Lakeville's electric uh, energy usage by individual account um, to the DOER uh, energy tracking system called Mass Energy Insight. This is done voluntarily by Middleborough G&E and by Sandy. They don't have to do it. Um, I that I, I don't have to do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. 
Um, <laughs> that, that, that energy tracking software um, is available free to every municipal entity here in Massachusetts, and it's a really powerful tool. You guys have used it very well. Uh, Jim is very well versed in it. Uh, you can see where you're using energy and how much. Uh, so it's it's a really it's a really good thing, and you guys are uh, doing a great job with that. But if Sandy and the Middleborough G&E didn't provide the data, it would have to come from all your cost centers in all likelihood, and that can be a little cumbersome. So thanks to Sandy and G&E. And last but not least, uh, Nathan, darling. Uh, your building commissioner and zoning enforcement officer. That's a <coughs> pretty big title there. It goes on a little further. <laughs> <laughs> so, Director of so uh, it, uh, it's been a real pleasure working with Nathan since he's been in his position. Um, he's been Lakeville's point person um, for the last couple of years, uh, and he's a great deal of reason that the town has received to date $546,598 in Green Communities grants since July of 2012. Um, of that money, about $300,000 of it are projects that are done. Um, we got about 247000 more, right, Nate? Yep. Um, that we're working on, and we're going to hope that we get those done sometime in later fiscal year 18 or the beginning of 19, so that we can get you in line for another competitive grant, hopefully in fiscal year 2019. So. everybody um, for being um, so good at being a green community uh, it's a big help for me and so what I have in here is a certificate I'm gonna have to put my glasses on for this one so this is from the Commonwealth um, you know it says town of Lakeville for its outstanding leadership as a designated green community having fulfilled the goal of green community designation criterion three by reducing its municipal energy consumption by at least 20% after five years of implementing its energy reduction plan in accordance with the Green Community's designation and grant program established pursuant to Massachusetts General Law Chapter 25A, Section 10. Uh, this was actually, this was done in September of 2017, uh, the certificate, so that's when it's dated. And it's signed by Charles D. Baker, Governor, Karen E. Polito, Lieutenant Governor, Matthew A. Beaton, Secretary of Energy and Environmental Affairs, and Judith F. Judson, who's the Commissioner of the Department of Energy Resources. So that's what I've got, uh, short and sweet. And uh, I, I can't say enough uh, what a pleasure it is um, to work with Lakeville uh, in this program. Um, and I'm right up the street, so it's, <laughs> it's convenient as well. <laughs> Thank you to everybody for your efforts. Uh, we, got a, we got a lot more stuff that we can do if you want to, uh, and uh, I look forward to doing that. Great. Thank you. Seth, thanks for taking the time to come in tonight. I really appreciate your oh. insights on, on what we're doing and, and thanking everybody for their hard work. I, I think we're committed to the idea of this because it's a resource that we can implement and, and have a positive change on what's going on. So I'm glad that the program exists, and I'm glad that we have a wonderful team to, to implement that. So thanks to all of you for doing that. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Good. 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 All right. So our next uh, agenda item is to meet with Jeff Barton for of Barnaful Farms, Inc., but we're going to have to hold off until 645 because that's when it's posted for. So we'll, we'll go through a few of these other smaller things um, for the next few minutes. <laughs> Thanks again. Take care. Thank you. Thanks for Thank the you. support. Thanks, guys. A lot of support. That's really awesome. Thank you. Uh, All right. So, number four is to review uh, and vote to sign the deed for 239 Main Street. We actually have a request to postpone the closing till the end of January. January 26th. So, um, but uh, I did, if I may, Aaron. Yep. I did talk, uh, speak with Sharon Everett, town council, and she said um, the selectmen should still vote to sign the deed. Yep. Vote to sell the property, execute the deed, and then she underlined some information uh, to authorize one selectman or myself to sign any other paperwork that right. comes down yep. the line. I saw this email. So, yeah. does anybody have any questions about this? No. 
So did you, you get any information as to what's going on with the delay? Well, when I got the call this morning from David's uh, assistant, she just found out this morning that the bank had asked to delay the closing till January 26th. When I called her back, it turns out that her boss, David, had asked for the buyer because of the holidays and everything else. And I guess he had met with Nate yesterday, you know, some questions on the... Um, uh, the split of the land mm -hmm. nothing bad just he wanted to clarify things the septic system so he had asked the bank it wasn't the bank asking okay All so right. um, he has full intentions of going through with it but he just wanted to wait until after the holidays what's the nature of um, where's the the form for the for the extension it's in the sign folder All right let me see Be, it's right on top. It's it's uh, the same one you signed to extend do, it to the 29th. Do you 29th. have a copy of the of the purchase and sales contract? extensions usually at the end no that's not what I'm looking at oh. I just want to check something here. <coughs> I'm comfortable with, with the extension. I was just checking on the on the deposit, in terms of the deposit. So to the deposit, if the guy flakes out and doesn't buy it, we still keep the deposit right. based on the terms yes, of that. Right. I just yes. wanted to make sure that was the case, because right. this is an yes, asking to sure. extend the mortgage commitment. So, um, You'll need that vote. So I guess I will entertain a motion to um, <coughs> yeah, hang on a second. Um, oh, for the extension to, first. Um, well, I guess it'll just be one motion. So the motion is to um, sign the deed for 239 Main Street. Um, <coughs> And other in other ancillary documents necessary for for transferring the property, and to um, authorize Rita Garbett to sign any and all other documents necessary to or convenient to convey the property at 239 Main Street to South Coast Redevelopment LLC, including without limitation any and all affidavits, settlement statements, and or customary forms required by buyer's lender, and to extend. Uh, or to sign the extension of the purchase and sales agreement time for performance which is paragraph six from 
uh, December 29 to January 26, 2018. I'll second. Uh, all right. Well, that was I entertained that motion. Okay, I guess I, I moved will it. make that motion. <laughs> you seconded it. You started it so long ago, I couldn't remember all those what it favor? actually started with. Uh, Aye. Okay. All right. The motion carries. It's unanimous. It must be how you feel when I go through OPEB. <clears throat> Pretty much. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Rita. So, and just an update: the assessors did move in Monday. Uh, they're in the conference room, still unpacking boxes, but. Um, for the most part, uh, I'm, I'm going to have Highway go over and clean out the items that will go to the transfer station. And because I, I called to schedule a walkthrough this morning, and that's when I found out about the extension. So it was good that I called. Yep. Um, we're going to do a press release in the middle of our Gazette just to let <coughs> we've left a sign on the door over there and um, here, just to the phones are working here. The IT has all been connected so okay great yeah and later tonight we're going to talk with Nate about it's funny when he called you Nathan I didn't know who he was talking about at first I'm like <laughs> who's, <that>? who's Nathan <laughs> <laughs> Nathan's hot dogs um, but we're going to talk with Nate later about the budget and redesign for the town office building to incorporate all of that so that's forthcoming um, so agenda item number two is to meet with Jeff Barton of Bountiful Farms, Inc., regarding the letter of non-opposition for a medical marijuana cultivation facility. So Jeff has requested a, a meeting with us to discuss this idea. They are considering a property located at 5 Harding Street, and they have met with Nate already to discuss the, the project. Um, they've included with us, or I should say they have included with um, their request to, to meet with us a letter as well as um, a presentation relative to um, their company and their goals and uh, different aspects of, of the, um, the operation. You have a copy of all this stuff, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes, thank you. Right. Um, so thanks for coming in. It's great to see you all again, or some <laughs> of you again. <laughs> um, tell us what you, you have in mind. Sure. And so again, just an introduction. It's Jeff Barton. Um, so I'm CEO of, of Bountiful Farms. Um, joining me tonight, Senator Menard is acting as an advisor to, to the organization. Making sure they all behave themselves. Yeah. <laughs> We're trying. That's, that's in the house. That's, yeah. Caleb Gilder is co-founder and chairman of the company. And Paul Rathbun is responsible for the uh, property acquisition and, and, and management. Um, so they've joined me and we'll talk about uh, the various aspects. And so I'll try and keep the presentation piece of it pretty brief. I think you all have seen the presentation. Um, as you know, yeah, again, so I was in front of you all about a year ago, um, previous with a previous uh, organization, National Remedies, uh, which um, received a, a letter. It was recently rescinded because we, we seized operations. Uh, my, uh, my capital partner pulled out tried to get the, uh, raise the money myself, could not do that. I was introduced um, to the, the Gilders um, by uh, uh, our, we both shared the same attorney um, and was hired um, to uh, run the, the, uh, the business, run the operations of the Bounty <coughs> Farms. So we're back in front of you all, and I appreciate that, and, and specifically requesting a, a letter of non-opposition uh, for a cultivation facility um, on, uh, at 5 Harding Street conditional upon uh, the property meeting zoning requirements. Um, and what I wanted to do is just, again, briefly give you uh, an introduction to Bountiful Farms and who we are, and then get into talk about the property and how we want to all together go forward with that, if that's okay with you. Sure. And then obviously entertain any questions that you have as we go forward. Um, as before, I don't go through slide by slide and, and hit that, but I just want to hit some, some key points that I think uh, are important. Um, so first of all, um, and what got me interested in, in wanting to join Bountiful is, is two main things. One is that um, the focus is on the patient, and I say patient specifically because it is meant for, uh, for the medical use, um, and, and so um, producing very high quality, consistent medical grade uh, products, uh, cannabis products, um, and, um, and 
you know, again, medical, I'll highlight because it is the, the policy to be focused on, on, uh, on medical until uh, it's federally legal. Um, so that there is not going to be a short-term interest in, in uh, pursuing recreational. Um, and I want to just address that right off. Um, the, the second point and why, and why I was interested in this is, is and it's a key piece of, of really how the Gilders operate. And so this is a family business. And, and as you know, when I was in front of you before, I, uh, I founded and operated my own family business for, for 20 years. It was Waterfresh Farm. Uh, we uh, produced, uh, grew hydroponically produce and opened up a retail operation. And, uh, and so that piece of it, and that's how I wanted to run Natural Remedies, and that's, but that is the, the Gilder commitment to running it, to treating um, uh, the employees and working with the community as, as a family-run business. Um, and, and that is an important piece of it to me. Um, and when I talk about the, the community as another key aspect of, of being a part of that community, and that takes the place of, you know, not beyond just the, the, the community host agreement, um, but also it's the job, the jobs that would be provided here and providing preferential uh, treatment to, to Lakeville uh, residents. Um, and then it goes beyond that. I'll get, get into that in a, in, a, in a little bit more detail about um, just the Gilder way of, of being a fabric of that community and looking for ways to, um, uh, to impact and invest in the community. Okay, um, so the uh, the management team. Um, just again, very very briefly, I'll address questions as you have it. So um, I'm CEO and have responsibility for the overall operations of the company. Um, a, a cousin um, is the uh, Gilder Keeler is the CFO. He's uh, um, uh, brings a lot of, of uh, economic training and financial training uh, to to the operation. And Zachary Taylor is uh, um, the GM responsible for the uh, uh, the cultivation. He has 10 years plus growing in Colorado for two of the largest growers, um, and the, he was um, lured here um, because of the commitment to uh, to focus specifically on high, very high quality medical grade, uh, and that's why he is elected to to come east and and join the team. Okay. Um, again, so the, the next thing, and, and again, I'll talk about this is why I, I think it's a, a very important piece to me, and I think important to the community, is what the, the Gilder family brings. Um, so first and foremost is, is the investment in the company. Um, so Caleb and his brother Luke founded um, the company. They have put $10 million of their own money um, into the, to the startup and operations the, to get the company up and running and going forward. And so they're, they've put their own money on the line. Um, but then the, the other piece that I think is important is, is their belief of how, how to be a member, a true member of that community. And, and for that, I think it's best to, I'd like Caleb to just talk a little yeah. bit about what that means to the, the family. So. My brother and I came up with this a couple years back, sitting around the table with our mom. We were looking at where the market was going and the good that it was doing on other areas, the types of diseases it affected, the type of people it helped. Now, we've always done very well. This has been happening for a long time. Um, but one of the things we've always noticed is that it really <coughs> pays to pay forward to the communities and to the entities that allow you to get ahead in the first place. Now what we see with marijuana, my brother and I felt strongly, was that, yeah, we could create a good business here, but we could also help a lot of people doing it. It almost seemed like because we could, we were obligated to. If you can help, you should, and we're in a position where we can do so. It's about it. I mean, everyone that works for us is like family, that's true, and we work with them side by side in the trenches. Um, we're very involved with Jeff and with the management of the company, and we really are serious about seeing the ideals upon which this company was founded carried through, not just in our lifetime, but into our legacy and our predecessors. This is something that not only we can build, but we can pass on, and we think we can create a good story here. It really boils down to it. 
And I just to add to that is so um, the 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 wealth in the the family was initially created by the grand by the grandfather, um, and a key piece of how and how he set the tone for the family is giving back into the community. And there's been a variety of ways from from donating to the schools um, that he went to that that, that his family had, had gone to, as well as other things they based in New York City. And so Jeff, a lot of that is if you don't mind. <laughs> well, I mean tonight. Um, the Gilder Learman Institute for American History is the largest privately held collection of American history in the United States. My grandfather created the expectation that, and the cultural history, I mean, a lot of people can say they like to do things, we can prove it. All you have to do is look online and our sources are there and viable. We have a cultural history of, like I said previously, paying forward in other ways such as, whether it be our commitment to Yale College in Connecticut, whether it be a, our commitment to Northfield Mount Hermon here in Massachusetts, whether it be going through the Gilder Lehrman Institute for American History. You know, we really do value the heritage and being able to give forward that which we've done and that which we will continue to do to other people, whether or not they're in a position to seize it for themselves or not. I mean, one of the greatest things that the Gilder Lehrman Institute does do is that even now, um, principal at your schools, local schools, you, anyone can just hop online, fill out an application, send it in, and you guys will receive exhibits, you will receive material, you will receive books, you will receive free of charge everything you would need to actually teach and pursue a course on different aspects of American history. And that's just a gift back because without being able to look back, we can't really move forward. We need to have a clear view of where we came from to know where we're going. And this is not something that my brother or I take lightly. Our family worked real hard to be able to get where they're at, and they've passed these same values and lessons on to us. I'm sure almost everyone in this room knows what their parents are, who they came from, and what was important to the people that came before and allowed for you to be where you're at. We don't take this lightly. We do believe in these things, and I hope to prove it to you. Great. Good. OK. Um, so that was really the, the background on, on the, the organization and the company. And, and again, I kept it brief, but in, in interest of your time, if there's questions that you want and ask about that, that's great. But at this point, I wanted to just shift a little bit and talk about the property. Okay. okay. Um, so <coughs> as we talked about the property, it's by Harding Street. Um, the, um, the, and there's actually, yeah, Paul, why don't you put that up? So we did prepare um, the, uh, the property, the talk, so you can see it. But in the presentation, it is a little hard to put there, but you have the, the property and then the zoning. Um, the key piece to, to talk about, so this is currently business zone. The bylaw is industrial zone. The, and Harding Street is a, you know, it's a mix between, a bit of a patchwork between industrial and business. So right now, we do not meet the zoning, rec uh, zoning regs uh, for this. Um, so what, what Paul, and, and I'm going to have Paul go through in a little bit more detail so you can see what we're talking about. And again, you know, we're talking, it's cultivation only um, that we're talking about. Um, but when we met with, with uh, Nate Darling, we talked about the fact that it, it doesn't meet the zoning and what's the right way forward. And, as far as we could see, there's two different avenues for us to move forward. One is to um, to change the zoning into into industrial, so then it would fit, or creating some sort of an overlay district um, in that area, which would be a bylaw change. Um, either would, either would, you know, there's going to be a, a certain amount of, of vetting that we need to go through with the the, the town boards, um, uh, and then it, it's going to come down to a town meeting um, in order to to get the authority to, to do whatever way is the best way forward. Um, from our perspective, because time is important in this, ideally, we'd love it to be in a, a, some sort of special town meeting if we can get it moved through the process quick enough as opposed to waiting until next June. Um, again, we're going to look to, to work with, with you all on the boards to determine <coughs> what's the best way forward 
and and then from that matter, what's the best timing or a way to work this out, um, assuming there is a, um, an opening or you know you're interested in, in letting us pursue this. Um, Paul, if you wouldn't mind just I guess sure. explaining what this is and sure. what, what you've got there. Are any questions about the property? The the property located at Five Harding Street uh, on the southern side of Route 44 is currently owned by Harding Nurseries LLC. It's Ron Turowitz at East Cap uh, Excavation out of Battleboro. Ron's owned it since uh, early 1990s. He's done nothing with it. There have been several other interested parties in, in purchasing it, but for whatever reason, they have not gone through with the, the uh, completion of the transaction. So it's a just under 32-acre parcel of land with 625 feet of frontage on Harding Street. It, it was uh, formerly the Lakeville Nurseries uh, Company back in the 80s, and prior to that, it was owned by the uh, Hodge family, wherein they ran a mink farm back in the 60s through the year of the 70s. There is still a small red um, two-story barn building in this area where they used, used it for storage of their bushes, their geraniums, marigolds, that sort of thing. And there are some old dilapidated uh, wooden structures in and around this area. This was uh, information taken from um, the map that Outback Engineering had done for Tim Spillane. Tim Spillane was interested in purchasing it two years ago. Um, so what they did was they reconfigured it based on uh, the available land, which is 32 acres, with really around 17 acres of it high and dry. They've allowed for the uh, setbacks. They have uh, located on it the bordering vegetated wetlands as well as iso isolated wetlands and the linen washburn brook as well as Polkoi brook, uh, which is the border of uh, Middleborough. It's currently a business owned property. The adjacent properties are owned by um, the Colonial Trophy, Monkey's Liquors over here, and then the McGee family where they park uh, cars that overflow from their dealerships. <laughs> Across the street on the northerly side are two small parcels of vacant land that are presently zoned business. The rest of the surrounding land around it is owned by, or was formerly owned by the De Croce family. That's Millennial Circle. That's all industrially zoned. Um, we've we've uh, located approximately a 40,000 square foot footprint in, a, in the upland area. Um, it's just for Discussion purposes, it's just a conceptual plan right now. Uh, in the event that we go forward with it, we'd be able to begin doing some of the more detailed uh, engineering work that would be required for the Planning Board, Zoning Board, as well as the Conservation Commission. Um, there is an existing driveway on it. Uh, we would propose paving it. There's no additional curb cut that we would need, but we would need a driveway permit from the Board of Selectmen. There is a uh, gravel driveway to the rear of Cross Street. We would not use that as uh, access to or fro from the property. Maybe uh, there'd be discussion as to as for use as, a, as an emergency exit or entrance for fire or police. Um, that's the property. Would would require a change from business to industrial. And again, that's something that would would look for you from look for you for guidance on. Paul, I have a question. Sure. So the 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 portion that goes <clears throat> out to Cross Street is that an existing way? You said it's gravel now. Yeah, it's a gravel so driveway. It, That's how so we used to drive in there. Yeah. A pre-existing. It looks like it bifurcates that that piece of wetland. It goes through it actually. Okay, but it's it's currently there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I don't. I've been back there through through Route 44, but I haven't. That cross street thing is interesting. Yeah. I, I didn't know that that was there. Quite honestly, the uh, the mink breeding facilities, they were just, just small barns. They were on either side of that uh, gravel driveway to the rear of it. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. And every once in a while, you'll see uh, squished mink out on Route 44. They're feral now. They still, uh -huh. they still reside out in that area. The back area of the property, it's heavily wooded. The uh, National <coughs> Wildlands Trust owns uh, this parcel over here, all right? They have had discussions with Outback Engineering. Uh, they've had discussions with uh, Ron Turowitz about acquiring an easement to the rear of the property for uh, the maintenance of green space. It's something that I think we'd be open to discussing with them, okay? 
Um, the other properties are residential properties to the rear, and as I mentioned, uh, business owned properties adjacent to it. There is town water uh, that runs a line, so we would have to uh, talk about a municipal agreement extension on that. As well, there's a natural um, gas filling station that the town of Middleborough established there many years ago for their future fleet of naturally uh, powered gas, which they have. Still never have it. <laughs> but there is, there is an existing gas line right yeah. there. Yeah. Okay? Great. No, that's interesting. Um, does anybody have any questions for Paul relative to the, the presentation on the property? No. No, I, I, I somewhat get that. Certainly I'd want to get into, uh, when we get into your business plan, the size of the building and things like that. So I don't have any questions regarding that. I'll save my okay. two cents worth for later. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I have other questions related to, you know, some of the difficulties or perhaps yeah. discussing the difficulties of taking a 31 point something acre parcel and putting a 40,000 square foot building on it and how you would sell that as a zoning change when the potential for the revenue of developing it in a business area, I'm not sure what we could put on it, but it's a lot more than 40,000 square feet. So the tax revenue generated from that may be a contentious, I don't want to say contentious, but it's certainly a point of concern in a zoning change as to what it could be and I understand that you know we've had this conversation right. too about some of our other parcels right. because due to the setbacks and everything else right. you know things just don't get developed C and so you either have it lie fallow or there's something actually on it. I'm just kind of bringing C it up for sake of certainly the, the most notable potential tenant prior to Splains being interested was market, market basket, basket. That's correct. and, market and that someone fell through for a lot of a variety of reasons but once I understand the, the scope of your building, then I can understand uh, what else might be necessary that we have to jump through. We've, we've always talked about Harding Street being the right place for this type of a business. Uh, I certainly would support a change to industrial. Having said that, going to a town meeting, that's a real crapshoot. But, but I think... <laughs> I, I, as one-third of the select group, would not oppose that at all. I think it's the right place for the business, and I would support it for a variety of reasons. I mean, you're either doing business where you can do a substantial uh, business of, you know, 40, 60,000 square foot business. However, they've tried to market it for many, many years. Mm -hmm. There's other issues if you bring in hundreds of employees then it starts becoming a problem putting them onto Route 44. Mm -hmm. So a big structure, we'd love to see a big structure there, but I think that the cost might overwhelm that party to comply with what the state wanted regarding widening road, studies, lights. Right. It's, it's a nightmare. But this type of a business there might, right. might work, and I, I would be one of the supporters of that. Ms. Holland, did you have some questions about the potential tax revenues? No, I think I'm bringing it up for the sake of, again, mm -hmm. the strategy for a town meeting okay. and the concern okay. for that um, related to the fact that there are more acres to be developed there and trying to counteract the, and I, and I look through the host agreement, you know, you've got payments related, because it's just gonna be cultivation, so it's not gonna be a, an agreement based upon sales, because you'll be selling somewhere else, you'll have your dispensary Correct. location somewhere else that you'll be shipping to. So it's, you know, we've got that payment, which I haven't done the math, I don't know exactly with Nate, you know, what we could potentially put there for, if it was business owned, you know, with the setbacks, the potential square footage that you could have there, what the revenue would generate. But those are the questions that I would want anticipated okay. because coming to town meeting, okay. that's what we'd be facing in terms of a zoning change. Okay. Right. The, uh, what they're both alluding to is the, the concept of what's the possible best use based on the zoning. And would this uh, uh, development of this size really? Um, be the best use in terms of getting the most uh, potential tax revenue. Now, there's always the, the debate of this is real and the other side is hypothetical, right? Uh, 
That's correct. But that doesn't necessarily matter when you're at town meeting. Well, you know town yeah. meetings. Yeah. Right. Right. He's a former selector. Right. He knows. Yeah. Well, I read it, too. You don't, you don't necessarily know what whether it's factual or whether it's reasonable <laughs> or whether or it, whether people are going to jump behind something if the, if it hits them in the gut yeah, and it could be correct. completely off base. So I think what we're kind of alluding to is there there should be an overall strategy on how you want to present and advocate for a zoning change that anticipates all those different factors. One, you know, the potential tax revenue or the potential upside of having this developed to the maximum potential versus this. This is a very specific use. It's not as if we're changing. Um, no, I think you're okay in the sense of it's not spot zoning because the, the adjacent area has plenty of, of zoning similar to it. Um, so I think you're okay with that, but this is a one particular parcel being changed for one particular use. It, it you really have to make sure that that you're um, that it's presented in a way where people can't poke holes in it. Yeah. Right. And, and right. I think that you know that's, that's the, the that's the trick. And the concept of a special town meeting may actually backfire <coughs> with this group to have a special town meeting that's separate and apart from the annual town meeting. Because first of all, sometimes we have a, a problem getting a quorum. But secondly, it brings up the issue. And we've, we've talked about a zoning change for allowing for the use um, for an RMD to not point back to it only being a nonprofit as well, that we have a concern with how or well that would go through town meeting. If it's not part of an annual town meeting, people start to get excited over having an opinion. Okay. And what happens is you're going to have the emotions come in as opposed to the business sense or you know t taking a look at it from a rational perspective as opposed to what might happen if people start hyping it up because this is a, a marijuana meeting is yeah. what it would be you know looked at right. as and yeah. I, I right. you know we, <laughs> what's right, nice about how we've operated thus far is the decisions to to issue letters of non-opposition and and we like you personally and like what you're trying to do i mean i think we have faith in in you as as somebody involved in this you 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 are very sincere and you you have the credentials to support what you're trying to do so i don't think that there's a problem from a credibility standpoint but we can operate on this level and things can happen if you take it to the town meeting level it it gives people especially if it's a special town meeting it gives people the ability to mobilize and and do what i say as expand the electorate yeah. now we're very successful at town meeting when the same 80 to 100 people show up well hopefully 100 because that's the quorum but when there's a contentious issue and the people against an issue bring an extra hundred people to the meeting that are all going to vote no, you're sunk. Yeah. And, and I so, you. I mean, just so you, you understand the backstory to all this, it's a two-thirds vote for a zoning change, so that makes it extra difficult to get over the hump. Right. Um, so I, I personally wouldn't advocate or, or I wouldn't... Um, I wouldn't put forward a special town meeting specifically just for this. It, it wouldn't, it, it, for a couple different reasons. One, every town meeting is precious in the sense that we fight to get a quorum. So, okay. you know, that's one piece of it. Um, the second is, you have to vet this idea through um, different committees and the planning board. and. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, even if you wanted to try to do that more quickly, you probably wouldn't get through it until June anyway. Um, the wheels of government, unfortunately, even at the municipal level, are horribly slow. Um, and that's no reflection on the people that implement the government. I think that everybody here, including <laughs> Nate, doesn't might, might be. No, I think that's true. That was a good scene. Um, <laughs> criticism's okay. It has nothing to do with them. It's it everyone. Everyone. No, no, it was a good it scene has, Nate. It really is more of a reflection on, on the fact that you're dealing with volunteer boards. Mm -hmm. So sure. the planning board meets once a month, sometimes twice a month, and they need to review stuff, and they need to have the hearings, and they have to give notice to all the abutters, and they have to... So the mechanics of having these meetings is is very cumbersome. So, you know, just I, so 
personally, I don't think the the idea of doing it sooner than June is a reasonable one for those two reasons. Um, right, and you don't have any meetings scheduled between now and June anyway, right? Do you or do you Town have? meetings? No. no. no we meetings. just had our fall special town meeting, okay. which... In, in November. We typically do them six months do apart. The one? No, <laughs> and, and typically I would say that the fall town meeting would be your best chance anyways to get it going through because we'll have a school issue mm -hmm. I'm sure at this you know upcoming annual town meeting we'll have a much larger quorum than what we need um, because it will be it'll, we put it at the end of the, the warrant anyways but November is the time to be able to get things going through in a much more um, I guess expeditious manner yeah well I uh, not that you I, want to no, wait to November. No, but no I exactly. From the other Water side, it's if, if, right. If you I've had, had to do all if this you stuff, had the so ideal situation and you knew, yeah. November is the better meeting to do it than June, for the sake of the fact that there's a hundred people at the November meeting and there's three hundred at, at the okay. June one. Okay, I, right. I, I get it. Right. So, I, right. I, I think it's a great location, but having said that, when we talk about a grow facility versus a full uh, recreational retail facility where if you will the town gets six percent of the take <coughs> that's a different sell when you say that's a hundred million dollar business and six percent of that I can go to the taxpayers and say these are substantial numbers and I, I support the location I don't know that I support just to grow facility there's no money in it basically for the town and and then you get into the zoning issues of business versus mm -hmm. uh, medical you know whether you give us 50,000 100,000 that isn't the money that would interest it you know the, the building would help uh, but getting a percentage of what we expect in the state of Massachusetts to be six percent for retail uh, that's a substantial number. So I haven't got into the business plan aspect of it. I certainly support the location. Uh, sure, and as I said, we did, we don't have plans for for retail there. I, I, you know, we'll talk with we'll yeah work with the town, but obviously this isn't mutually exclusive for there being a retail uh, facility on, on the Kenneth Welch either. So you know, it's a matter of it, it's not like we're going to take it away that revenue or the revenue potential no, mm -hmm. exactly something that's going to be exactly but it's an easy sell for me at town meeting if there was a hundred thousand dollar retail revenue uh, that we can work out that math what the town gets okay well the, I, I, but but that's just the town meeting aspect it's not so much us yeah I would like that area zoned industrial irregardless of what you folks do okay so um you know, again, I had asked for whether or not, you know, how we go forward, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So one is, is is whether or not you will, could vote and grant a letter of non-opposition conditional upon meeting zoning requirements. And then the second is just your counsel on, all right, what's the best way to go forward? Mm -hmm. Is it, you know, we need to start the vetting process. Is that, what's the, the right vehicles at the planning board that we, you know, to have a meeting with or right. I, I don't know what the... I mean, you're kind of stuck in a position where you know you want to move forward, but you need all your ducks lined up and you can't seem time, to get right. them you know lined up because it's going to all be dependent upon town meeting vote and trying to do the public hearings to get to the town meeting vote and trying to get everything so you certainly don't want you want to know that we're willing to support a letter of non-opposition before you go through all the efforts of having the public hearings and trying to put it out there and getting to town meeting right. and that's what you're looking for the, the letter for right I mean, and, and then just what's the right in, in your support to go you know t in front of the other boards mm -hmm. and, 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 that, and I guess that's so that's one question is the letter and then the second mm -hmm. question is what's the right process is it is it to schedule and go in front of the planning board is that the the, the like the, the the right way to go forward as mm -hmm. we begin the vetting process <coughs> and that's my, part of my question to you is I don't know what's the right board to go through to start you the answer that and Nate can perhaps pipe in uh, I, I'm sure you're all capable of doing it too Nate, you. I'm just trying to mix it up. Yeah, well, right, right. I don't yeah. want Nate. Uh, a, you, you got a, a an attaboy in the, the earlier meeting, so we'll take <laughs> it. <laughs> then you're, then you're, 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 you're
there's, there's a handful of different ways in which you can go forward with the zoning change. And obviously all of them result in a, well, hopefully result in a two-thirds town meeting vote. So when is that changing? I think that a respectful way would be go sit unofficially I, I with the planning board okay. and see if they would even a entertain bill. a conversation or give you support. Yeah. Ultimately, the board of selectmen have to issue a memo to the planning board and ask them to hold up a public hearing. So I mean, you you have a couple of different ways to do it. If the if the selectmen so chose, they could go ahead and, and send a, um, a memo to the planning board for, to hold a public hearing on this. But I think you have time, and I agree with Aaron, I would go for the, I, mean, I, I don't see as though you'd have any time to get it on anything earlier than June. And then you wouldn't hold a meeting in May and then another one in June anyway. So I'd definitely go for that. And I think the advantage of dealing with the planning board in an unofficial capacity in the sense that you, maybe you, get on an agenda just to discuss the project with them so is it a regular meeting or is it like yeah you just go to a regular, regular meeting, planning board and meeting and we just say uh, just yeah. have a conversation with them and, and bring this and just basically do the same pitch to them the value in that is that that is as much as we have to say about the letter of non-opposition they really are the ones that would stand up at a town meeting and make a recommendation relative to a zoning change. So if you get buy-in from the planning board, and trust me, it's not going to come from us sending a memo to them saying, do this. <laughs> <laughs> they don't really like us. That, that, that okay. doesn't work either. <laughs> we shouldn't say that. We get along with them. Hard, but that's true. They, no, we get along with them cordially and professionally, but they have, they, they have their own opinions and they have their own purview, and we respect their purview. And, and you really want to get buy-in from them independent of us. Okay. You're not going to have a problem getting a letter of non-opposition from us, is my opinion. But the zoning piece is a huge, is a huge shift, and, and they're really the people that can make or break that to a large extent. And I think, you know, Nate, I would, I don't even want to assume, I'll just ask you, are you in favor of a zoning change for, for purposes of going from business to industrial in this location? I mean, regardless from your perspective, of, it makes sense. With, regardless of this, I would be entertaining that conversation anyway. I've had multiple people approach me with other industrial type uses. It's a perfect property for it. Right. So I think that, that that's really a great angle that, that we can approach it from, you know. I Regardless understand. of what's going there, we should entertain the idea of changing this to industrial for the following reasons. Couple that with the fact that we're in support of your business being located there, you know, with your reservations about revenue and all that. Right, but right. in a general sense, I think that we're, mm -hmm. we're all kind of on that, on that space. Um, getting buy-in from the planning board independent of us is is great advice I think because um, they they'll let us know what they think they'll do it in kind of idiosyncratic ways but we'll find out um, and, and then we'll know whether it's going to work and or whether there's certain aspects of it you know and they may have some suggestions that that we haven't even thought of I mean they deal with the zoning and the planning of, of laying stuff out all the time and they really Okay. Smart so, guys, so. Are you going to, or are you changing over from a nonprofit to a <coughs> C-Corp? Yes. NS, okay. So, Nate, what do we, is that another bylaw yeah, change as well that. that we do need to, because right now, under the existing bylaws, we only point to a nonprofit corporation, so we know that we have that issue also. Right. We don't know if the Cannabis Control Commission is going to be making some sort of concession for the zoning, because do we point to the Mass General Law definition on the RMD? Or we sure actually specifically problem. state it, I think, it, in our bylaws, which is the problem. And in conversation with council in the past, it's like whenever possible, you point to the MGL. Okay. And, and that way, so when it changes, LGL, it, we don't MGL have to change it as well. They, yeah, of course, drafted this bylaw that's now flawed. Yeah, right. <laughs> of course they did. So uh, yeah. One other, one other thing, if I, if I just might say quickly, um, is the Zoning Bylaw Review Committee, I believe, is meeting with the Planning Board on January 4th. 
I'm I thought, I think it's the 25th, Nate. 20, 25th? The 25th, that's what we decided at our ZBAC right, meeting. Yeah, I don't think it's that's the 4th. No, it's not on the calendar. Right. Well, we'll CDC's back. meeting on the 4th, if you want to meet about CDC. fireworks, you know. Control. <laughs> 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 that's the 3rd. <laughs> we're uh, we're going to meet that <laughs> Thursday <laughs> instead. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah, exactly. But, right. So, so I, I would exactly. certainly want, unrelated to the, the marijuana facility going there, I certainly would like uh, the major rezoning to be industrial on 44 and residential on Crooked Lane. I'm also talking about that. But, but so the yeah. zoning changes, oh, I would support some two or three substantial zoning changes, this being one of them. I'd, I, I could rather support this going to industrial unrelated to, to, to a marijuana grow facility. But I think it's the right place for industrial. Yeah, I'm just trying to think about, you know, the fact that we'll have potentially two somewhat marijuana-related, you know, articles on it. We would have to do that anyways mm -hmm. with regard, well, I suppose if they don't want to convert to a right. C or an S or right. or Maybe you could just explain to me for a minute your, your pro forma profit and loss statement. No, not whether it's 12 million or 10 million or whatever. How big do you want this grow facility to ultimately be assuming that uh, you're going to be a grow facility for beyond medical, you get into uh, recreational. How big a grow facility do you want? So the ultimate, and again, I will preface it yeah, to say no, that, no. that the intent is waiting and we would not do anything but medical until right. it's federally legal. Exactly. But it would be a, a multi two-story so 80,000 square foot facility. 80,000. Correct. Um, not all of that is obviously grow space. Um, right. but, but once you get to that level, the majority would be grow right, space. Right, because every 10,000 square feet probably give you 15 million in, in, in retail in, sales, um, if it's a grow facility. It's a grow facility. Grow and facility. Yeah, that's probably right. Some, something in that neighborhood. So I look so, at that as a very substantial opportunity for you folks and for the town I'm I'm a bit hesitant uh, that it just is a grow facility and not with the benefactor if you will of the retail facility I like the location because of the traffic that it's out of town it draws people we went through this before it draws people from uh, Fall River and New Bedford Brock mm -hmm. and I think it's a fabulous facility for a retail outlet in a full growth facility, whether it's retail, corporate, whatever, of 80,000 square feet, I think it's a great use for that. To do just a, a I'm just saying, if it's just a, a growth facility, I don't know where my support would be on that. So with all due respect, I mean, part yeah. of the thinking on this is that, um, and maybe it's, it, it's I don't want to blindside you when no, I say I support the industrial <laughs> location but I don't know that I support just yeah, a growth facility. I, so, so I think the point yeah. being is is that we would um, certainly consider um, retail. I, going into it, the assumption was is that you would not be interested because because we would not be interested in, in selling recreational out of that next year, right? I mean, we would we would and so therefore, if it was going to be retail, it would be medical only retail until it's federally legal, which oh, could be several years, at which point you know, then we would entertain, um, you know, a, a recreational sales, but, but we're just not interested in going there until it's federally legal. Right. So no, no, and I, but I think we're okay and, and would consider working with the town if that's the selectment of the town's interest in that. And so I, I think that's part of it is, is you know, in, in watching and talking to others, and when I was in front of you, I mean, you. This board is um, is really good to work with compared to a lot of other towns, um, and and I think you've been clear in using the word partner, um, and, and which is really nice from our perspective because we're looking to do something similar. I mean, and that's where if, if we listen to you and you listen to us, and then we both try and find the right solution for both our business and and your town, mm -hmm. then it works. And, and if, if part of what you want to see is the eventuality, or even if it's medical only, 
um, right. initially, then we could entertain that. I just didn't know if you wanted that. Yeah. So I think, though, you know, I'm not so hung up on having a cultivation facility without a retail yeah. component. Right. Um, mainly because of the fact that we've had this property sit there for a long time. And again, that's going to be the concern, I think, to try to get over that hurdle at mm -hmm. town meeting would be the potential for this property again. Um, and I think that, you know, that the way to sell it also is the fact that you won't have that retail component. There is a benefit in the perception of that to people that they won't know it's there. It's right. hidden behind all these woods, wetlands, exactly. dirt, <coughs> gravel road, you know, whatever it happens to be, a bunch of mink running around <laughs> going crazy. Um, you know, so it, there's this there's this perception of people won't even know it's there. And that's the plan, you know, that I assume that you have there is that right. you want this to be here. It has easy highway access when you start to do transportation and it's not going to have a big impact on Lakeville, which is why we don't have the, which mm -hmm. now under the new rules and regs too, with the host community, with the retail, you actually have to prove that you have expenses that are being offset against the revenue that you have coming in right, from those right, facilities. Right. So this is a, a little bit of a different animal. Um, where do you have letters or are you proposing, you know, in other towns for local dispensaries? It doesn't even matter, you know, for us, but yes, um, you know, clearly you've got, is it one, two, three it locations? It would be three eventually. Three locations. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so, yeah, but there's I mean, certainly there's certainly an advantage <coughs> to what you're proposing over the retail aspect mm -hmm. in the sense that there's less traffic and all that. And I think, right. but I think John's concern is is maximizing the revenue for the town right. based on the on the circumstances. Right. That, that's really. And really I what I think saying. the the question or the point then being is that we already know we have one going in on Kenneth Welch property's been purchased. You know, mm -hmm. we'll see. You know, I mean, it, it's always funding. It's the biggest issue. Um, but you know, so that that would be the retail component that right. we would have that we'd be working with. Right. These guys wouldn't be anywhere right. on this right. on you know right. the spectrum in terms of having participation in that retail market here. Right. So you wouldn't be competing against each other. You would just have the location right. and the growth. But facility. you started out the beginning of the meeting talking about maximizing the value well, of the property, and there's no maximization. For a growth facility at all for the town of Lakeville. I mean, right. We have an 80,000 square foot building that we'll get property tax on. We'll have the host community payment that we'll have coming in, and that's it. Right. Which is in addition to the host community payment. Uh, uh, in addition to, to what an we empty, would have empty lot. Or an 80,000 square foot now, building. Right. You, you, get the value, so, you get the value of the building, is what you get. Right. That, that's really mm -hmm. what the town gets. Yep. And, and I get that. I'm happy if something's there, but I can just think of, oh my God, you're doing this for marijuana, and the, the problem I have with the towns recently is, w we've been supportive of it for the most part, mm -hmm. and there's way too many towns in the, in the state that said, oh, I know it could pass at the ballot, but I really don't want it in my town, and, and I don't know where we'll, where we'll go in this, you know how town meetings are. I mean, I, I can support that, but the maximization of the of the tax property uh, would just be the building, which right. is better than an empty farm. I get it. But we're just, we just we talk amongst ourselves because of the ridiculous open meeting laws. So uh, <laughs> we, we don't talk at the local bar. Right. I, I get it. And, so, and I, so we talk about we don't talk about this stuff at the local <laughs> bar. Right, 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 right. That would be a much more no, interesting conversation. No, I, I, I think I, I certainly will, Aaron, um, our chairman will wrap it up, but I think we're all generally supportive of of a so, non opposition, so that type of thing. Would you like us to, to vote to to sign a letter of non opposition relative to this parcel contingent upon, of yeah. course, the zoning? All right, so we'll probably have to I run it by town can. council just uh, to make it, sure that we don't I have think an it issue has with to it. say that it conforms, but we can check on that. So, and I, I'll just leave this with you. Mm -hmm. um, our, our attorney did mm -hmm. some research on this, and so this is what the town of Monson did. Um, similar, but it's it's a conditional letter, and it basically okay. says, and as Rita conditional. said, it yep. it says it's conditional. But Rita's right is for the state, it has to say 
it meets zoning requirements. Right. It but this does, is right? it yeah. gives us, you know, as you said, yeah. some comfort within it. Yes. It yeah. clearly yeah. states that it's conditional yeah. and that a follow on letter would come. Yep. And but, but I'm comfortable with that mm -hmm. in, in you know, and you can verify with you yeah. know, we'll just make the, the whole thing contingent upon town council's approval. verifying mm -hmm. or, or having town council review it. Mm -hmm. Yep. That okay. Um, I just know that the that building right? commission yeah. has to certify it in the right. Okay, sure. one, so right. yep. okay. I mean, we'll we'll give you as much as we can give you right. at this time. Right. So I guess right. 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 And we're we're all excited about a business going in there. That's helpful. There's Thank no you. question. Okay. Um, all right. So, do you have anything else you'd like to add? Or if not, I'll I'll just I'll ask for a motion, and we'll we'll move forward. Anybody like to make a motion? Motion for non-opposition, as drafted in the town of Munson Munson about. Non opposition uh, after review of uh, uh, the letter from our attorney. That it will be. Uh, oh, subject to, to the sub subject, subsequent right. letter. Subject to many oh. subjects. Okay. <laughs> that's a hell of a, a, day, a, hell of a motion. Second work. that. Yeah. Most that really motion <laughs> ever. Um. Attorneys. Leave it in the attorneys. <laughs> Everyone makes money. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to second that? I will second that motion. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. The motion carries. It's unanimous. All right. Thank you very, Good luck. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Nice, nice to see you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Nice to meet you. Okay. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rita. Thank you very much, Mitzi. Nice seeing you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas. Thank you, Mr. Parley. Merry Christmas. Oh, yes, he did. I'm sure he did. Can I ask which attorney you guys are working with? We're with Ms. Levin. Friends and Levinson. They're good. Yeah. They like to spend four hours telling us what we can't do and the fifth hour telling us how to do oh it. Oh my so God. It's yeah. always for you, so, right? Yeah, you get the yeah. And it's all billable. Yeah. You better to your advisors. Thank you again. Thank you. 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 Okay, so number five, we have a request to appoint Michael Smith as a special. Oh no, I'm sorry, Nate Darling's number three. This is a point out. This is a letter. It's a letter of support. That's fine. So hey, will you work yeah. out the details? It's the non-opposition with the same yeah. type of language yeah. that yeah. talks about it. Yeah. Hang on, let's see what we got in here. You can always say something that is exactly. <laughs> Stay right. out of the candy. Thumbs, thumb prints, and all. Is that a cream one? Somebody busted, you know. Oh, look, they actually have the thing so you can tell what you're in for. Language They're all gross ones oh, left. Okay. Okay. This one. Strawberry cream. You see the orange fill when you put it back? I don't think that one's in the right spot. <coughs> it wasn't. <laughs> I got duped. That was a peanut oh, butter crunch. Yes, uh, I printed yeah. out Nate's things for you. After, after Nate, can we do a five minute recess? Yes, sandwich break. Oh, the sandwich half. I, I don't know where they went to, but um, hopefully oh, they are. Uh, no, we there. have we have one assessor, right? What do you mean? Just two. Principal assessor. Yeah. Well, it's, a, it, it's assessor's office. Perfect. Consultant. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no, you you're not, you're not uh, critiquing my grammar. I it's an, that that's sign. An it's, it's oh actually my God. That sign. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was like, what, what does it say? Assessor. It just says, ass <laughs> no, it just says assessor office. It, oh, it, it decided okay. to ignore any <laughs> concept of plural. Oh, it office just in of case and or you'd possessive. Tell, you'd come it in just tomorrow said assessor and tell office. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yeah. you got to rethink that. Call it's it an perfect. office of assessing. It's, it's perfectly yeah, fine. That would be fine. <laughs> I've walked by it ten times and I didn't notice. It just says assessor office. Yeah. Okay. We'll All take right. care of that. So number three <laughs> um, is to meet with Nathan Darling to discuss the budget for the redesign of the town office building. So thanks for putting this together. I know I, I've been a pain in the ass. So on both of you no. for the no, sake of getting no, this, but I want to. I want to get. It. Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> no, we only wanted to, we only wanted to see, sell the building a year and a half ago. We got more money because it took so long. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's part of the strategy. <laughs> right. So, this is great. I think you've got you know you've got a design that we're all comfortable with. 
you've got the phases and some relative costs. Obviously, the caveat is that it depends a lot on, um, on procurement. Um, did anybody have questions about Nate's plan here? No, only the tax collector layout really isn't a layout because it's not walled out or anything. I kind of get the intent, but I question whether you need to do that second door, and if you will, that this becomes, we'll call it Deborah Kenny's office, which can go in this way, and maybe if that's done away with, you have a door there now. But that that's just minor. Yep. I, I agree with... Uh, pretty much all that's written down here. So, if I may, Aaron. Uh, <laughs> you may. So, the, these are just some contemplated changes for now until we figure out um, whether or not it's going to be financially viable, get input from department heads and employees, um, and, then, and then solidify this. We've gone back and forth a little bit with the architect <coughs> and I and come up with what I believe to be the best possible solution. Um, but again, I, I've got an email out to the department heads, the yes. affected folks. Um, I've asked them to, to come to me with questions, comments, concerns. I want to work with them closely, make sure we get their buy-in um, yep. to do this. Renovation um, by committee it was ex exactly. always the best way to make decisions. It may add to the time frame, but I had another year and I, a I half. Do I do think, <laughs> I do think <laughs> it, I mean, it's the right thing to do. No, it is. And, and I appreciate you for doing that. I saw the email earlier today, and I think you're right. So this is, this is a, um, a draft, if yep. you will. Um, but I think that it's a good it's a good starting point, and I think you know our plan is to get feedback from department heads, um, like maybe incorporate some of the you know those types of things yeah. to make the space more specific to the needs of the department. But generally speaking, this is is kind of the layout we're starting with. It's the most reasonable layout, and I would like I mean with the support of the selectmen, I would like to get started on that um, sooner than later. I have no reason to believe um, that we can, can't start right in on the this this assessor's piece, which is phase one. Yep. Um, we can't do them all at once because we have no place to, you know, for everybody else to work. So as we phase in, um, on the phasing plan, we're just kind of shuffling folks around, and it seems like it's going to work out really good. So I wouldn't mind starting right in on phase one and see how this is all going to uh, work out, but I'd like to get the buy-in from you know the department heads first, and yep, and then maybe uh, soon into January, maybe the first second week of January, I give them until you know for response, and then maybe by the third week of January, I'd like to just start. Uh, right to your point, it, it has probably lasted uh, too long, so if we get right on it and start in on it, see how it starts to work. I mean, I think the phasing plan is very relatively inexpensive. I think I can start it right out of the uh, maintenance budget. So with all of this, um, with the, those are file cabinets, I assume, in the inspections? Like, is it going to be like the, the layouts, and I put that in the, um, in the phasing plan, don't get, try not to get hung out on what's, hung up on what's inside of it. That was just a okay. conceptual. So, just giving but, you an example. No, no, no but the, the big question is what we've wanted since like day one is it's one file. set of files, <laughs> you know, that would be located, I would assume, you know, in general in that the area okay. then because yep. that, and so we are consolidating files yep. to get them to that so point So if you too, see so. in the building department, Yep. What, yep. what is now what is now the building department yep. there's no file cabinets yeah. to speak of well i'll have to have a small set of file cabinets in there for stuff that i use daily but not actual property addresses so the same thing with the town where tax collector they'll have their own files good yeah they can find that okay. out. and that's one of the things we didn't include in the cost was were the file cabinets file that cabinets. we uh, got pricing on from wb mason mm -hmm. okay i think it's great right and uh, i, I I think structurally upstairs, let's say the selectmen and a few other people move up there. Uh, that's not big money, but it'd be paint, painted, carpeted. Paint, paint and carpet. But after people have moved around, we then need to take from where conservation is upstairs, the conservation agent is upstairs, a step down coming from the offices to where Dave Goodfellow is today. We'd want to change that area, ultimately, too, to, to benefit the fire department, which would be a different 
Yeah, right, that would probably scenario. be the, the women's, you know, quarters or whatnot, yeah, right? Yeah, so 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 exactly something like that. that. Right, right. So, so we don't want to forget that uh, th there'll be another five or $10,000 for us to move upstairs, whatever that number is. Yep. But then secondarily and later on is what we would do in the fire, I'll call it the fire quarters. Yeah. And Dan actually has sort of a layout of right. what he'd like to see up there. Right. Okay. Right. Great. Yeah, and that's a reasonable use of that space. I mean, yeah. it's if it's not being used right for for those other departments because right. they right. moved around or right. I Is mean, it, it's really only a few people right up there anyway. So one right. thing, you know, I think it might be uh, this might be silly and it's like aesthetic, but you know, like you go into every town hall and there's signs and, and again, I'm not picking on like the paper signs, but like to actually Temporary. direct people as to where they would mm. go. I mean, it's not. Mm. Well, we have much, the map out on the wall there. The, the, the actual right, over that's the it. doorway <laughs> signs that come exactly out that come out that people the, can see. And, you have know, you been to the new Plymouth Town Hall? No. Have you? No. It's unbelievable. Twenty Six Court Street. They just moved a month ago. Oh no. It's. It, I'll bet you it was a. I don't know how many mil 20 30 million dollar building right no. Raynham redid theirs and theirs came out really good it's it's low-key but it came out very very nice yeah, yeah. carp is my favorite it was a rehab of their town hall in this is the old courthouse on court street Oh, okay um, so when you look at it it's up on the hill and it's brick <laughs> and you see what you think is just the old courthouse which is the first part of the structure but then they add it on to the back, and it goes right up the hill, and it's it's huge. Um, it's just a giant. It's awesome. Um, I do anyway. ag I do agree with uh, it, proper signage. It's, you know, but my point is, is that when you <laughs> yeah. go in there, they have these big signs that <laughs> say the assessors, and right. then they say well, you know everything. Everything right. is very easy to find, and it's very yeah. it's really well laid out. It's a, right. you know. Yeah. Well, having the main. You know, potentially having the main um, accessible entrance here, as soon as you walk into this area, you'll be everywhere you need to be. Mm -hmm. You have the tax collector, uh, yeah. you know, or tax collector, town clerk, assessors, have a, some signage down there pointing you at inspectional services. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. it. You know, yep. four locations. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So we'll be, I think we'll be good. I'm excited. Great. All right. Thank awesome. You. Well, yeah, I think, yeah, get your feedback and then maybe, um, just let us know what you hear from that, and then we'll go from there and, yeah, and, and break some ground in January, yeah. so to, to speak. Break some crap walls. Yeah, pull some carpet up. No digging dirt here. Um, all right, did you have anything else? No, that was it. All right, well, thanks for coming. Oh, thank you. Thank you. If I had no sandwiches. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, sandwich no, break. We're taking a break. Yeah, right. We're taking a break. Yep. Take five. Like cam five. Thank you. Hey, folks, we're back in action. <laughs> <laughs> we're on number five, request to appoint Michael Smith as a special police officer. Chief Avalera has requested that the board appoint Michael Smith as a special police officer. If appointed, his term would expire on July 31, 2018. We have a letter from our chief asking to appoint Michael Smith. He's a Lakeville resident. He's a retired state police officer. Or I should say he had recently retired after 25 years from the Massachusetts State Police. It does not specify whether he was an officer, but clearly he was involved in policing. So I will entertain a motion that we appoint Michael Smith as a special police officer with a term to expire on July 31, 2018. I'll make the motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Number six, a request from Derek Maxey to connect six residential lots to Taunton Water on Rhode Island Road and 33 Main Street. The proverbial White House. 
we got these applications. This would be Derek's proposed um, Form A, so-called Form A lots uh, for residential purposes on on uh, Route 79 or Rhode Island Road, of which I think um, we talked about the idea of, of this being kind of a non um, impactful use of the property in that I'm certainly okay with the idea of providing water. Um, does anybody else have any questions or comments about this? No. no. Okay. I move that we approve the request to provide water for the six residential lots on uh, Rhode Island Road to Taunton Water and the 33 Main Street <coughs> uh, property, White House. Well, that's your motion. I'll second that. Yep. Any further discussion? Um, what happened to... The Middleborough water, I thought that White House was hooked up to Middleborough. Have you heard? Did he just opt to go with Taunton all around? I think I would not support hooking up to any Middleborough water. So. <coughs> all right, well, fair he, enough. He's, he's asked for Taunton water that I would vote for. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion carries. It is unanimous. Agenda item number seven, renew and vote to renew public entertainment on Sunday's licenses, dancing on weekdays licenses, livery licenses, and coin-operated amusement licenses, license, C-O-A-L, coal. Here we have it. I will stop eating to read them. The livery, livery license expires December 31, 2018. JP's limousine service, two vehicles. Dancing on weekends. Days. Oh, I'm sorry, weekdays. <laughs> you can't dance on weekends. <laughs> uh, LeBaron Hills Country Club, Orchid of Hawaii, Fraternal Order of Eagles and Lakeville Golf Club, Inc., Coin-operated amusements. Uh, the Eagles, one machine. Public entertainment on Sundays. They got a machine, so it's actually for two machines. All right. Two machines. Thanks for the correction. The Eagles or yes, the Eagles. Okay, thank you. Public entertainment on Sundays. For Sundays during 2018, licenses licenses expire December 31, 2018. LeBaron Hills Country Club, Orchid of Hawaii, Fraternal Order of Eagles, Lakeville Golf Club, Inc. So with that said, I move that we approve those licenses as read. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Agenda item number eight, review and vote to renew class one and class two annual licenses. Eight Class II used car dealers and two Class I dealers have submitted their renewal applications for January 1, 2018 through January 1, 2019. Um, it's probably actually December 31st, 2018, right? Car license is January 1st. They run 366 days? They do. Wow, okay. Learn something new. Learn something new and completely irrelevant almost every single day in my life. Nate has inspected these uh, premises and found them all to be in compliance. They have a copy of Nate's memo. We can vote to renew the licenses. They would all expire on January 1, 2019. The Class two license renewals are Salvatore Cucciotti, DBA SC Auto. Get it? S for Salvatore and C for his last name, <laughs> which I can't pronounce. Cucciotti. United Auto. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, 19 South Kingman Street. United Automotive Services. 
298 Bedford Street, <coughs> Lakeville Auto Sales, 35 Taunton Street, Shannock Auto Body, Inc., 35 Bedford Street, Chris Altieri, DBA C&E Enterprises, 43 Freetown Street, Leonar Leonardo Soliana, DBA Soliana Auto Sales, 18 Staples Shore Road, Andrews, Andrews Family Automotive, 79 Main Street, Linda Burry and Jason Burry, DBA Elite Auto Sales, 431 Bedford Street. Each one of these applicants is paying $200 for the privilege of selling used cars in Lake Town of Lakeville. Class 1 License Renewals, Russo's Recreational Rentals, Inc., 150 Bedford Street, Route 44 Collision Center RVs and Boats, 8 Harding Street, $200 a piece for them to uh, get their Class 1 license renewals. So I move that we grant those licenses uh, as read. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries. It's unanimous. Agenda item number nine, review and vote to renew common vehicular vehicular <coughs> licenses for various businesses in Lakeville. They are up for renewal with an expiration date on December 31, 2018. They are as follows. Baldi's Pizza, Inc., Pizzeria, Inc., 40 Main Street, Cisco's Pizza, 166 County Street, Corporate Chefs, Inc. for Talbots, 175 Ken Kenneth Welch Drive, Sandy LLC, Three, uh, 330 Bedford Street, Duncan, J&J Seafood Drive-In, 197 County Street, Amarac Educational Services, LLC, 96 100 and 112 Howland Road, for the FL School System, 30, one, uh, 232 Main Street. The Sunshine Cafe, 12 Harding Street. Royal Pizza, 68 Main Street. Something's Bruin Book Cafe, Inc., 241 Main Street. Tanned, Inc., DBA Subway, 330 Bedford Street. Nextine, Inc., <clears throat> for Ocean Spray, 1 Ocean Spray Drive, The Back Nine Club, 17 Heritage Hill Road, Pacoy Brook Golf Club, LLC, DBA, Pacoy Brook Pub, 20 Leonard Street, Orchid of, of Hawaii Restaurant, 201 Bedford Street, Lakeville Eagles, 217 County Street, The Broken Tea Virtual Golf, 166 County Road. Lakeville Golf Club, 44 Clear Pond Road, LeBaron Hill Country Club, 183 Rhode Island Road. So I move that we approve these licenses as read to expire on December 31, 2018. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion's, motion carries its unanimous. Kelly Shumway is at it again. She wants <laughs> us to rescind her junk dealer and collector's license at 290 Bedford Street. We issued Kelly a junk dealer and collector license in October. She's not moving forward with renting the unit. She asked us to rescind her contract. As such, I move that we rescind, I'm sorry, her permit. I. Move that we rescind her permit. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Nancy was so interested, she got up and left the room during this discussion. I was going to go check on my antiques. All That's those what in she favor? Was do there, right? Aye. 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 I actually was going to leave over the next one because I can't vote on the next one. <clears throat> All right. Surge. Surge has gone out to bid for DPW services and has requested that the board award the following bids. This is agenda item number 11. This stuff is great. 
This is the item. So I'll read item, company name, then total price. <coughs> Pavement reclamation. That's the item. Murray Paving and Reclamation is the company. $52,728.10. In place hot mix asphalt. Item. PJ Keating is the company. 282957 is the number. The item of micro paving. Seal Coating Inc. is the company, $178,200. Polymer Modified Crack Sealing from Crack Sealing Inc. $42,694. Chlorinated Rubber Traffic Line Painting by Markings Inc. $19,715.60. Structure Work, Tasco Construction, $31,000. $937.50. And last but not least, everybody's favorite, sidewalk construction and setting of curbs and edging, Tasco construction, $66,772.80. The total of all services is $675,005. Whew. All right, so... Do we have any questions, comments, concerns about any of this stuff? I have questions on marking inks. Tracy, who did this year's? The roads that we just did. Looking. If it was marking inks, I'm reluctant to renew it. Hasn't it always and been like every time? Isn't well, it? no, the, the year before, it the year good. before was okay. I, if I may. We threw the last guy out before that. We also had the problem, uh, Jeremy had sent pictures uh, on the crack ceiling. Remember the pictures that was not, and they had to come back out and fix it all. I think, I'm not sure if it was a two year contract. Um, in 15, Highway Safety did it for the 16. Yeah. I can't seem to find a contract uh, other than uh, that one. I guess. Oh, wait a minute. Here's one. Highway Safety did it. Um, we did a contract in February of 2017. Highway Safety? It was different. Yeah. This Which is, is a unusual. different company. We've used them a lot over the years. I'd say we've probably used them, I'd say, at least 10 years. The one that, ju the one that just did it. That was I think he gets a, uh, a DUI award or something. <laughs> but uh, this line but uh, well, I'll, I'll tell you, before we do it, we'll, we'll make sure that uh, they have some kind of a performance r right in there. Okay. That was only my only question. My question is, <clears throat> crack sealing is done by Crack Sealing Inc., why isn't the micro paving done by micro paving ink? Why is it done by seal coating ink? <laughs> no idea. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> they're all brother-in-laws, and they're all just in damn collusion for price fixing. Yeah, probably. Probably. Um, all right. So, <clears throat> I will make a motion that we accept and award the the bids as read. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm abstaining. Oh, okay. One abstention. You know the guys that did the crooked that lines? Back <laughs> is yeah, in collusion go go with micro sealing <laughs> ink. I'm actually just trying to make them change their name. <laughs> okay. I'm working with the Secretary of State right now to do micro paving ink. All right, let's talk. While we're on the subject, let's talk about our superintendent of streets or lack thereof don't have one and let's talk about that so um, this says all right so John you have some right. ideas you want to bring right. up well no, it's or not, it's not, it's not in the appointing of, and yep. John spoken with Roger <coughs> Hamilton whose last day is tomorrow uh, for the winter I talked to Georgie Freights, not Georgie Taylor. Oh, I'm sorry. Georgie Freights. 
and so George Freights will be taking over the duties of Roger Hamilton during the winter season, and uh, he, he we, we've agreed upon the pay, 40 hours a week. It's very similar to what not the superintendent's pay, but other people are getting paid, and he gets time and a half for the storms, exactly as we do for other employees, and this should cover us through the winter and or until you find a superintendent. Okay, great. Now that's good news. I mean, you know that, um, you know, I think that there's this idea within the committee that's looking for the replacement that, you know, there's kind of a time, time crunch here, which I think to a certain degree there is, but it's good to know that somebody's in place for the interim time frame. So if, if uh, you know, we can continue to continue to provide services to the town relative to right. keeping George, the roads clean. Georgie Freights did it all his life, and he was he was the uh, assistant there for years, so it should it should work out well. Okay, great. Do we have any new business? Did you, I can't remember. Did you vote to name Roger as the interim? Should you vote to name George as the interim? I don't know. Did we vote on? Did we vote on Roger? I think you did. All right. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll make a motion that we have Georgie Freights be the interim, interim. superintendent. Gotta call him Georgie though. George, <laughs> George, Mr. Freights. Have to be careful, Mr. George Freights. Okay. Mr. Chair. Yeah. Um, on the the superintendent of the streets, um, the I'm not sure how long the ad stays on the beacon. Is this something, do we want to put it back on there if it's gone? Oh, you, I would think you want to keep it on there. Do you want to do any sort yeah. of advertising? Yeah. I mean. Yeah, so we haven't received any additional um, Just that applicants one. other than that last one. Yes. Right. Yeah, I think so. I think we want to keep looking. I mean, not to say that the applicants aren't good, but we haven't had that many. Do you want to, do you want to reach out to a newspaper north? Of here instead of doing the standard time oh. south. Well, isn't how much was it for the print version of the beacon? You know, I mean, that's really like the audience. I know that we put right. it on right. the online, right. but wasn't we, it we kind of a little pricey on, on the. Mm -hmm. but it, it's not in the print one. The print right. one is right. expensive. Right. How much the is online one is a lot cheaper. Right, than but the I think print. the online one is used more frequently, but we also put it in with some of those highway. No, we didn't. we didn't. They don't have. Oh, really? Yeah. And then Chris we Peck gave us. No, well, the other two associations, they're. Yeah. How, how, how much it, was? How much is the beacon, the printed version? Printed version, I want to say it's at least five hundred. It's in your I mean, memo. You look, you're looking it's to have a position from, forever. Right. I would you put need it in to the put it in the printed version. I actually think it's a. Yeah. Yeah. Put it in the printed version. Two to one. Put it in. I don't think it's that, quite that much. It doesn't, it make, any, it doesn't make any difference. Okay. doesn't make any difference. All right, so that's in. It's done. Any other new business? Yes. No, no. Um. Go ahead. You do that. <coughs> I just want to talk about solar panels and police station, not, not a long-winded one. Yep. So I uh, just want to, last year what we did with Winterfest fireworks is that we've raised enough money with the CDC so far that we can offer the $3,500 fireworks show nice. this year um, where we are soliciting additional funds so that like last year this is what we did is we authorized the $3,500 we got additional funds so we were able to raise it to the $4,500 um, I am asking for the ability to sign the contract um, for the fireworks and future contracts with an upgrade on behalf of the CDC which is a I make that motion that we allow Mitzi to sign the firework contract. And I will second any it. Future. And, and any future subsequent future. agreements yeah. relative to the yep. implementation of the much anticipated and always appreciated fireworks for the and Winter I, Fest. And I have to say, Aaron and I could not have raised that money. Mitzi did the bang up job. <laughs> yeah. Right. We'll have a K1 speed cart there. We'll be there. Oh, nice. It's not gonna Go anywhere, I don't think, but <laughs> demo oh, guys. I win. Yeah, I would. Yeah, that'd be great. So we made that I motion. Would. Yep. All those in favor? 
Aye. You second it, and everyone says aye. aye. Yep. Perfect. And I'll put it on your next agenda to ratify the vote on an agenda, because this was okay. not on the agenda. All right. Um, any other new business? No. Old business. Old, old business. Is there a quick update on the solar panel situation at the train station? Um, a quick I have been in touch with Senator Roderick, yep. and he's been in touch with Karen Polito, and we're going to have a meeting with someone, but he said um, he would have to get back to me. That's fine. They heard us loud and clear. Okay. The, the police station, maybe I'll just speak to I went to one of their quickly just went to one of their meetings last week and uh, I from a from a monetary point of view Mitzi had indicated she might be interested in going to the next one and I don't know if you still want to do that and uh, I think that I just have some further questions so Maybe that we can talk about them before you have another meeting. Not a long-winded conversation, just to go over what was presented at the last meeting and what questions I might have. I don't want to try to drag those guys in here, but maybe the three of us just do a, a five-minute review of the numbers to try to make sure that we're coming in at the $8 million. We're not making that happen. I just have some questions. I'll give you an example. If if uh, something was brought up for $20,000, uh, the, the project manager says, oh, we have that in the general fund up here. We'll just move it down into the soft cost. I really think we need to, and maybe you have that, an accounting of, of, the, of the building, the what's of in where there. Going because in. what I think is happening is there may be a lot of money in there that uh, either they'll use or if we take out, I want the building to be reduced. So I'll give you an example. If you, if you take yeah, away no, $100,000 and say, no, we're not going to do that, the building should come down by 100. Yeah, I, I, mean, I got the feeling that it will allow the, the builders to increase their quote by 100,000. Well, the building still comes in at $8 million, but we may be giving up some things. So I mean, are you looking for like the AIA sheets, really, like for construction purposes, kind of like which does go through in details? Yeah. I mean, that'll be after we. Yeah, it, right? it's not it's not the document of the hundred pages of the sheets, but what is in there, you know, uh, not the square foot of the building, but uh, if they have a hundred thousand dollars in there for communication, right, equipment, and then we say, oh no, just run the conduits. In the hundred thousand dollars, I don't really know what's happening to that. Whether it comes out or that's the price for the conduits. Is that information available now, or would it only be available if, when we actually go out to bid? Well, I think they have it all. I think they've had two two of their cost estimate cost estimators quote those items to see the line items two, that two add up to groups. the total. Right. I'm only concerned not for the minutiae, but. I think we say, oh no, let's not do that. Let's reduce the cost so that we're going to come in at the eight million. But let's say we take out three hundred thousand dollars worth of items, and the building should have been reduced by three hundred thousand, not become more affordable. Right. And uh, the the outbuilding, uh, if if I understood the outbuilding to be eight hundred and eight thousand dollars of the picture today then the rest of the other building should have come in at 7.2. And then I'm not going to debate whether the project <coughs> manager is 400, the design is 400. But just generally, if the outbuilding was 800, the building should come in at 7.2. Once we say that, and if we're looking for a 7,000,002 building, I might be more apt to say, let us, when I say us, let us do the building in the town. Middleborough just had to spin theirs out because that outbuilding continued to escalate from 600000 to eight hundred to over a million dollars. And they just took it out and they're just taking a different approach and cut it in half. So I just have some 
questions, I, I could bring those questions to you with the forms that I got the last meeting. I don't want to take a long time of your time, but uh, they're ready to go out to quotes. You're going to have a meeting early, Jan early January, I think. When is the next meeting? Do you know? Early January, and it then they're going out by the end of January. Yeah, but it will be in January. And, and I didn't want to say, give us that information at that last meeting, because then it would delay going off for quotes. I think, though, you know. I don't have, I'm, I'm being rambling on. No, no, I get your right, point. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess my question is in the original, I think it was the OPM agreement, where it talked about what the building design and what it would cover and all that stuff and it stopped short on certain things and I think it was IT related if I remember correctly where it said you know we get you kind of like what you're saying is get to the conduits but not go beyond that but there was do we know what the final costs would be if we go back to that original contract because as we went through it might have been the architect's contract but I think it was in the OPM's contract where it said we'll do this we'll do this we'll do this we won't do this we won't do this we'll get you to this point but we won't do this because I'd like to almost see just in general or see if the committee <coughs> can see okay in total well what what is it that we haven't even addressed in terms of the cost and when we go out to bid what do we need to still finish it to the specs that we need and want because I do want that to be considered because that that's kind of what I think overall we were saying for the total cost of the building but what if the completion costs really which they said are out of scope are really another three four hundred thousand dollars what are we doing about that and I think I want to make sure everybody's mindful of the entire construction cost which isn't just what goes through the OPM and the architect well I, oh I, yeah no they, right. they have numbers for all that okay. I, th I think yeah. it, I think but it, that's that's when you look at that number in in with all the different cost estimations that's when it's anywhere between being close to eight million dollars to being as much as what was it nine nine point two so wow. there's a wide range and they don't necessarily know now they they've honed in on different discrepancies and, and there's um, there's a spreadsheet that Mike Forth did with his crew from Suffolk that shows the specifics on what was bid in the discrepancies in the price and the reason why there's discrepancies. So for example, one of them was the concrete. You know, one guy bid or, or put a number down of say $200,000 and the other one was like 350. Well, the reason why was that the more expensive one was was a thicker pour. It had a, a vapor barrier built in. I mean, there's just different aspects to that that bid that made it more costly. So there's not always an apples to apples comparison in each line item and that's kind of the issue with all of this is that th you have to tighten up that Spence. request yeah. for, for a proposal to a point where it's everything's nailed down and that's the job of the architect and the project manager who's reviewing line by line all of that stuff to make sure that it's specific and that it, it's not the three hundred and fifty thousand dollar one if you really want the two hundred thousand dollar one mm -hmm or vice versa. So those guys have a lot of work to do, but those are the ones that do it. Okay. But with that said, absolutely come to a meeting and ask whatever questions you want so that you're under, you have an understanding and you're comfortable with the process. Because, I mean, you were there. It, right. it was. I'm glad you were there because I think that was a good meeting for you to be a part right. of and you contributed right. greatly by being there. But they're, they're pretty information dense <coughs> sessions and they're pretty right you know right. You, you cover a lot of ground with them right um, I just got got a little bit lost what I didn't want to do is wait till uh, let's say the next meeting is January 16th and after that meeting the the quotes go out and somewhere between now and then uh, to answer some of your questions uh, if you formulate well, questions, I can get them to the project, the, to the OPMs, and they'll answer them. Yeah. So yeah. Taylor and, and Rick Pomeroy will will yeah. take time to explain anything okay. that, that people need yeah. in advance of a meeting. Yeah, yeah. Do I don't want to pull it at the meeting because yeah. then that's not fair. They haven't mm -hmm. pulled together those numbers. So let me go back on the numbers that were given to me. Yep. And and somewhat address. <coughs> Mitzi's issue, what was in yeah. the original, Do and we, then if it gets sorry. taken out, 
the price should reduce, yeah. not allow us to continue with the building. It should be reducing. Right. And I, I can tell you that if if they had a budget of eight, if they have a budget of eight million, I got the feeling the quotes coming in at seven million nine hundred ninety-five thousand dollars, no matter what you do. Right. Even if you take stuff out. Yeah, yeah. and as I take stuff right. out, I, so, I get so that part. But then there was stuff. Oh well, we have it up here in the. I'll, I'll call it in the building cost. But I, I don't mean the building cost of what the 12 by 12 room is. It's all those supplemental things, and it's yep. got to do with the the communication. It's got to do with the dispatch. It's got to do with the tower. You know, I've heard varying stories, and and, and I don't. Aaron's the key person to that, and I don't want to. I'm not going there. But oh well. Yeah, we had $100,000 in there, but we took it out. No, it was never in there before. I can just see these because a change order, if to do it right is $100,000, to do a change order starts at like $200,000. Right. It would be nuts. Yep. Yeah, and so what we ended up doing, I don't know, you probably don't even know this, the, the, um, because the, the bids range from anywhere from $8 million to $9.2, the Bids question, meaning the cost estimates. The cost estimates, sorry. Yeah. The cost estimates. So the idea was what could we reduce in the event that things come in high to still get the minimum? So that's where the idea came up to not do the outbuilding. The outbuilding is a sacrificial lamb to which it caused a controversy because the whole design of the station hinged on having the outbuilding, which was really your storage, it was your basement. Mm -hmm. So here is the architect who sold us on this design now saying, oh, you know, you just have to let that go by the wayside. So that was a big disconnect for me, and I know Rich with camera was <laughs> looking around like, what, how can you possibly advocate for this? And, and we had to really think it through in the terms of the strategy of getting the building built. And Nate was really the one who kind of laid it out that way. He said, hey, look, you do, you do your main building, and then add alternate one is 70% of the outbuilding. Add alternate two is the entire building. So if somebody bids it and it comes in at $8 million and everything's included, then you get it. But if everybody comes in and this is higher, and maybe this is eight million, then that's what you go with. But what if this comes in at eight million and this isn't this is nine point two, yep. like some of the estimates say, at least you get your police station. Now that to me was like, oh well, but we've kind of represented to everybody that this is what it was gonna be. But then as you start to analyze why we thought that, it was really based on and I'm not making excuses, but back of the napkin math in the sense that nobody knew what the hell they were just saying. Square when they, footage times. They were just know. had a formula, mm -hmm. and and maybe that isn't as accurate as, as we had hoped it would be. So the the consensus, and we voted on it, and it was unanimous, was to make this add alternate one, seventy percent, make the full building add alternate two, with the understanding that at the very least we'd get the full brand new police station built. And to John's point, maybe we go out to bid and put a space metal building back there as a right. garage or something else that's yep. way more affordable if we yep. do it right. Right. after the fact right. or piecemeal. Right. But my, my concern was that I then drove the entire building to be eight million when the building was only gonna be seven two. Right. So then the yeah. the project right. manager and designer screwed up by eight hundred thousand dollars, and I get the feeling that that's not not the committee. Totally I get the feeling that's the way we're heading. I'm giving up an outbuilding, so I get a I get an eight million dollar police station. Well, shit, I could have done that in the beginning. Right. Right. And and see see we're really in a bad situation on this because part of me wanted to say. Hey man, you told us this would come right. in at eight million for both, yeah. and now you've designed it and you're saying it, it can be anywhere from eight to nine point two. There's not a level of certainty that I'm comfortable with. Go back to the drawing board, but of course 
you lose a year by doing that. And then when does the roof collapse? Uh, right? Or You know what I mean? So we have these external pressures that are driving the decision to, to try to get right. the building built. But what I, maybe I've lost something here. <laughs> the 9.2 includes the 800,000 for the architect and the project manager. Yeah, we did have 88. So. Okay. Yes. And then yeah. 250 for the water line it is subtracted out of you the know, bottom. I think we're going to be okay and I think we'll get our outbuilding and I think it'll all happen and I think we'll be on budget. Yeah, but the the concern is if the bid comes back at 9.2 for the construction, not But that has of the oh. OPM and the architect that we've already No, but that included that stuff. Is already yeah. right. And it then the 9.2 uh, yeah. I'm not as optimistic. Yeah, I'm not as optimistic as But we backed you out are. another 100 and something for alternates. So even the highest bid now is eight million with the outbuilding in there. But wow. I'm just thinking we voted eight million for the debt exclusion for the building and we've used eight hundred in free cash. I is the thought that it's gonna be seven point two for the building and that was the original with the eight hundred if you looked at the original yeah. spec that we saw mm -hmm. was seven two yeah. plus the eight, you know, was the four. Right. I, I yeah. guess it, it's okay. re it's eight really total. right. Yeah. Right, right. So eight not total. So, plan. Total. So, okay. so maybe yeah. just put on uh, if, if Aaron agrees, on our next meeting, whatever that is, the third or the sixth, whatever. The January. Oh. No. Third. Oh. Is it no. five or six? No, 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 it's next week. Tomorrow's six for oh, okay. uh, no, Bob no, Lucci. No, no, not the sixth. It's uh, the third. Just just put down the. Uh, the You'll bring your questions. For 15 minutes. I'll, I'll yeah. just post I mean, some questions. Just have whatever documents you have. Right, right. I'll, I'll bring them in. And, uh, financials for yeah. that committee. I'll, I'll, I'll bring some see. of that information, but it's really just touching upon it. If we give up a half a million dollars worth of stuff t to get a building and an outbuilding, I may be okay with that. But then the design is screwed up somewhere. You know, we over designed the building, and then everyone, they're happy, like, oh, well, maybe we'll just take away this end of the building You're and not, do a sell no, no. I'm not going to do that. No, no, no I we're agree. Not doing no, that. I'm not happy. We're not doing I'm that. not happy. I think I'm on the same page with you, but that was a. That was a, like a, a catch-22. It's like, what do you do? Right. Do you right. scrap the whole thing? Well, then you still right. got to pay right. for the architect to redesign the new right. building. You lose a year. You know, I mean, it, it was a, a means right. to an end. No, I, I know. Think. No, I know. You compromise for the sake of, of moving forward. Right, but with, the, with understanding the, the potential um, danger yeah. of that. And, and, the, and the next police meeting which is like the second or third week of January. We haven't January. scheduled it yet. I don't believe. I think we did, but but the second or third week of January. We should post the board of selectmen in case we opt to go. Yeah. We don't want that trust yeah. me, I'm right. not heading towards yeah. selectmen go to that meeting no, all the time. No, that totally that would destroy the whole thing. No, it's it's yeah. kinda too bad. I mean I'm sure if you looked at it again, it's like if there was an option for the architect to do like the basics and then these are the add-on costs associated with it right. of, you know, if you want to do this type right. of concrete, right. you want to do this, you want, but maybe right. that's not what they do right. because I don't yeah. know that they do that, you know, it's but not. it's it, a basic design. The and design, I think the design is sound. I think yeah. it, he, he did a, a great examination of the existing uh, department in terms of the utilization of space and I think it's the building to build. I really believe that, but you know the cost issue is is somewhat Ooh. disconcerting. Uh, disconcerting. And, and he, he didn't give me the warm, comfortable feeling. If you use the stock market as an example, I don't know what the stock market's going to do. I said it's going to go up by a hundred dollars. It went up by a hundred and eight dollars the next day. <laughs> but but he's right. He doesn't know what those quotes are going to come in. But I believe they do. That's the problem I got. It's the same guys quoting it. It's the same designers, it's the same architects, and if they know they have a building that can come in at $8 million, that's what it's going to come in at. The tragedy of the quoting process right. is it's yeah. not going to come in at seven five. No one's going to save you money. It's right. going to come in $5,000 right. less than budget. Everything's 
public record. Public so record. You they know how much you know, is voted. Right. You Absolutely. have fifty thousand dollars in the budget for you know IT yeah. expenses. Yeah. I guess here's the contract. It's fifty thousand dollars. What a surprise. Nine ninety five. What a you surprise. Know, right. Done. Okay. Right. Let, let me try to spend ten to fifteen minutes next week on the third meeting. All right. I Any put it on. Other yeah. old business. No. Well, I'll, yes. Not for me. The IT thing. Oh. Oh yeah. Thanks I did for see. That I did see that. Yeah. Did, so did everybody have a chance to review this? Yeah. 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 I think I did. Did anybody have questions about this? I mean, we're still. So who's Mass IT? That's another like. That's. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, actually, I believe it's a state. It's through the Common Wealth Technology. It's in our um, the, oh, that's that tech, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's so that's they're going to come in and analyze. They're really going to take a look at the strategic <coughs> plan, the audit that was done, analyze it, and make provide the recommendations yeah, for so staffing. We just don't have this IT planning and oversight because they're supposed to oversee Phil, the Dynetech, but that didn't happen, right? We just what do you mean? Hired it. Is that like, am I still back in the same thoughts that we had before, which was John had told us that we should get someone to oversee Phil and supervise him to make sure that he was following through the idea. And that's what John did through um, his last contract ended September 30th. Yep. The things that weren't done that he pointed out, um, we never tested our disaster recovery. We mm -hmm. uh, he worked with. Phil, for that, we needed to replace the, we put in a server over at uh, the COA, and John followed through with that with Dynetech. We have our inventory, we have our five-year reuse, um, and he followed through with Phil on that. Right, so, so, my so you're really down to that email as to what got done, is that right? Yes, okay. I, well, I, I put it in the email of the right. things that he did follow through right. on. Right. Okay. Um, <coughs> That's what I meant. But I am, I, I can tell that I am going to be short because I did pay for John Barker for three months um, out of this year's mm -hmm. information technology right. budget. So I don't think Phil spent that much on the setting up the assessors. There was, you know, we did have to do. Uh, some IT there. TMLP took out everything today. Phil oversaw that in the assessors. So everything's disconnected over there. Um, and there will be some IT cost for the redesign here. I don't see it being a whole lot, but yeah. well, right now I estimate, and I, I'd like to continue on with, um, with Tim now doing police and fire. Mm -hmm. hmm having Phil stay here on the town side, yeah. let Mass IT come in and yeah, I, analyze everything I, I for us. Okay. I think we're okay with that okay. at that. this point in time. Yeah. Okay. So, Thank you. This was helpful. Um, any other old business? I just, any as far as new, just to update the board for your next agenda. Uh, I did, those are the plans that came in for the 40B. The two 40 bees. Oh, tomorrow night. Yep. Right. Tomorrow but night. this is, um, they only gave me one set of plans. You know, we have to give it to the police chief. All the town departments have to review it, and we have mm -hmm. to send the comments. I think you remember doing that for Water Street. Every highway, everyone, fire department, everyone has to look at it, and we send a letter into Mass Housing with any right. planning board, conservation. We have yeah, 30. I didn't I wasn't involved in Water Street because I recused myself. Oh, okay. From well, that's the process. Yeah. I did get the letter from Mass Housing on the 84 units. I expect the one on the 27 units. Same attorney. I'll be getting the letter from Mass okay. Housing on that. And there is a site visit um, scheduled, I think, for January 10th. I don't know if any of um, the town officials want right. to attend that. Great. Right. But I think the idea. For tomorrow is to get oh, it's the 40 hour application is to get that yes. squared away, and yes. but that's going to be helpful for our attorney too right. in our application. Yep, okay. so so as I did today, I had Lorraine put together a couple of things just a cover letter on the the 26 units 
and the 84 units and just the set of plans that backs that up rather than you know a three level view of all the building plans so we're really just talking about 26 and 84 of course it's gone from uh, uh, I think it was 122 to 166 to 120 to, I'm sorry Total one, number 122 to 166 back to uh, to uh, 100 and something now I just added it up at master plan last night. 110. So it's going back and forth from a high of 166 units down to 110 now. But I don't have a lot of questions regarding that. I mean, I'll save my right. questions for, so for the attorney tomorrow. Right, right. I get what he's doing. So, and master plan's been meeting regularly on our updated affordable housing plan, which is important to get in if we're going to go mm -hmm. forward with yep. the 40R. We should have the final document uh, in January. The Board of Selectmen have to vote to approve it, and the Planning Board have to approve it, and then it gets certified by the state. What, what, which selectmen is on the, that? Is, is Aaron on the Not board? anymore. No one. No one. <coughs> we had too many meetings. Okay. I jumped off it. Okay. We changed oh. the charge, actually. Okay. We've been meeting well, it, right know, regularly. Uh, part, of, part of what I read today, <coughs> we'll have to no read up. that, you know, they, they want to build 19 affordable units per year, so on and so forth. We only build 26 units. In a whole year. Well, there's 28 in, in just those two. Oh. There's in oh, the, yeah, but if this plan hadn't come through, you know, they want a, a housing commission. We're back to that again. No, not housing authority. Well, a housing, housing partnership is different, John. Yeah. And that's yeah, why. Right. right. Well, I mean, or it, the state wants it, that? No, the committee. It, yeah, you have to yeah, put really, goals and strategies yeah. together. It would be that helpful if, um, you know, if you just let us know. When the, I guess we can just look it up as to the, when those meetings are if you wanted to go. Yeah. I mean, the the two-page summary I think you showed me to, today, Lorraine, maybe you can just forward that to Mitzi and Aaron. Well, I mean, that might be a good just meeting to just get an update yeah. on. You know what I mean? I don't, like, um, I don't want to do anything that partners us with the state anymore. Well, the housing partnership is I know, in I'm the town I'm itself. It is not like right. The, the whole state. Right. When I look at it, and someone, yeah, what was it that I was reading? Nightmare. That was like that the solar panels and moving the train, and then the, and that would change I mean, your I, whole I, I attitude. Have, yeah. Fighting for all this but, uh, money. But, uh, before, they're they're, they're yeah. supposed to serve us. Bef We're not supposed right, to sit and right. beg and grovel <laughs> for the money that we gave them <laughs> with our taxes to yeah. reallocate it with in because they break promises and then they it's right. just ridiculous and maybe I'm right. being cynical but I've had it right. hey, you know right. Merry we, Christmas we, we got to get a, a nice letter you know <laughs> signed by the governor and Karen Polito on the you know yeah green they won't even answer and then our letter when we have a letter. serious concern relative to the safety of our neighborhood constituent aid services answered our we don't need a sign letter but they'll sign this right. crap that right. promotes green energy when when the mbta jerks came down and said that we don't even believe in green well, don't you want to support right. the environment we're one of the first green communities in the right. state and in fact we're one of the few who have reached the twenty percent goal. Oh, ten! I there's a lot of communities. I was surprised right. that only We're ten. I right, that was so impressive. So green. Let, We're so green. Yeah. So let, moving on. Yeah. No, let, let me have. <laughs> I want to go to bed. I'm asking Lorraine to forward to, to Mitzi and Aaron. Yep. I think it was two pages about what I call affordable housing. I think you. They're just strategies and goals. <coughs> strategies yeah, that you have to I don't have know that any of us agree with. There's strategies that we will not adopt if the state is going to then have right. one over on us. Right. The last right. thing is, and on your next agenda too, will be um, the bids for the um, office trailer. Just okay. All right, we don't need the data yeah. dump. Right. Ready? Bye. I move that we go into data data dump. I move that we go into executive session pursuant to MGL Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, for the purpose of discussing strategy with respect to litigation in the matter of Trokey v. Lakeville et al. Superior Court, <coughs> CA number 1783CV00700. Holding the meeting in open session would have a detrimental effect on the litigation position, and the chair so declares. I do. And pursuant to MGL 30, Chapter 30A, Section 21A7, to comply with the open meeting law, MGL Chapter 30A, Section 22F, approval of executive session meeting minutes for December 6, 2017.
And not come back into open session. Second. Second. So help me God. Howdy. Aye. Burke. Aye. Hollenbeck. Aye. Kelly. Aye. 